The first match is about to begin. And we are off with the first attack. Exo Danny is starting it with a queen charge twin hogs. With that queen right on the bottom side, gonna be able to help take out that defensive king nice and early. The beautiful thing about this is so the royal champion, whenever she moves around, will not get stuck on that king. Usually that could be a huge issue in many attacks. Yes, and I'm also excited about the base designs. First of all, we see a diamond-shaped base, I would say, here, and the town hall is a little bit inside of the base, so sometimes these town halls are protected very well by a lot of traps, but in this case, I think Exodani has done a good, uh, a good bit of, uh, taking out a good bit of buildings already, and there was no Tesla farm so far, so it seems that he's going to get his target, the town hall, out of the way pretty soon. Yeah, with that king now to oh. the left side, pulling out the CC, Rockaloon, Super Minions, gonna look to remove this down, pulling a sinking airline, so he's down one healer in this charge, but typically, Max, we may see a bunch of red air bombs that could be behind the town hall. You may lose all your healers. Definitely, and it seemed like the uh, defender was expecting this entry. Oh, there are the first ah! red, and there are the next red bombs. Is he going to oh, use no. a uh, balloon? He doesn't have a balloon oh, no, anymore, no, so no. he knows that the queen will die. So let's see how much he invests. Okay, one more oh, race from there. No! no! Bombs. And the Queen still has her ability, so that will give her some more value. But now it's all about what the Twin Hawks can do. Yeah, as he's gonna pop this one ability to try to protect the Super Hogs and Regular Hogs moving through as the Queen ability now goes up. Finally now uses that Warden Eternal Tome as the Royal Champion is pushing in. But these defensive Rage Towers are doing so much damage, raging up the Multi, the Scatter, the Exo, including the defensive Queen as he tries to continue this push. But the Eagle Artillery and Molot are still up. Yeah, but he still has a couple of troops there at the top side as well, and the monolith shoots away pretty slowly at single targets. It's very unfortunate that the Queen went down, because all of those targets down there, the Multi-Inferno and the Scatter that's still up, were targets that she was supposed to get. But with the Royal Champion ability still in hand, Dani still has a chance in this. And however, he finds the Skeleton Trip, and this is getting closer and closer. But the Tesla is looking to take out this Royal Champion. The Dinghy does that, the Giant Bomb is there, Oh no! down that Royal Champion. And Klaus is looking to start off with a defense against Exo Danny as he's trying to get every single bit of percentage because remember, if you don't get that three star, you're looking to get as high up close to 100% as possible. 92, every single building will matter. We've seen matches where it's come down to a single building determining the result. That's right, and we see two important things there. First, Exo Danny is the highest hit rate attacker from VN Esporting, and Navi, uh, and he, he was going in first, so he was yeah. confident, and I think the plan was really good. As we can see now, there's not a left standing, although the, this was baited and the queen died early off. But we also see that the base building from yeah. Navi and the preparation seems to be on point, because they were expecting exactly that entry. And it looks like Klaus is going to be kick. Oh, well, no, Klaus, we saw him out there. Sit the action is going to be coming in here with what looks to be a skeleton bat donut. We have a bunch of super barbarians here in this attack and to take on Hawk's base as we are seeing it. That's, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Cynthia's going for the town hall. He's what? looking to remove the town hall with spells. And the monolith as well, what? and the multi inferno and the expos. No. What's this man no. doing? Last invisibility spell going down, and oh, the town hall is yes. going down! What? The pressure of the world championship, and he does this thing. Oh, this is insane. Amazing. Wait, Max, he's got no more spells. He's out of spells now. Exactly, that's right. That's the downside of it. No what? more spells, but also that much damage out of the way already. And it also means that the back end rage tower will only rage up those multi infernos. But let's see what this hero push can do. He's bringing in a uh, Electro Titan with it and a long launcher to take care of the rage tower and the multi inferno. So getting into that nine, compa nine o'clock compartment with a nice funnel there. And then he's got Super Bavarian to finish it off. Yeah, the beautiful thing about this base is there's so many open walls. That is when Super Barbarians are perfect. So if you're looking at bases, you're discerning when should I use Super Barbarians? When you see bases like this, see all those corners with missing walls? Those are the perfect bases for using this troop because you can move into the compartment and out of the compartment with ease. 
Yes, but I think after this uh, opener that was so uh, highly uh, co cost, uh, cost so much with spells, I think a perfect warden ability uh, would be necessary, but he didn't catch too much as the Yetis walked to the other side. Let's see if the Yetis and the um, Electro Titan there can take out the scatter shot so far. Yeah, it's looking good. She actually went into the dead zone of the scatter uh, shot. So a uh, good thing taken care of that, but the back and multis with the Rage Tower now look pretty scary to me. Yeah, with this defensive Rage spell, gonna rage up the double multis here as Tassel's on the backside, but he does have nine Super Barbarians. He's gonna use them to pick off the Arch Tower, the can, the other Arch Tower. Yep. We're starting to yep. see the chairs! Yep. They're here in the <laughs> crowd here, cheering for Cynthia, and it looks like he's gonna be delivering a three-star for Navi with their first attack here in the Clash of Clans World Championship. What a way to start off using the skeleton spells, the bat spells to remove a town hall at town hall 15. And now VN is looking to get the answer. They have to deliver. Cynthia came in on the offensive side, previous sec. Now he's on the defensive side, trying to look to stop Elec from coming in with a three star. As we are seeing Super Barbarians yet again, because take a look, there's a lot of openings in the walls of this base. So he wants to get this queen to charge her way all the round by herself, as then the Warden, the King, can work together and the Super Barbarians can move throughout this base as he pops that Warden ability to try to have that blimp make it all the way to this town hall. Yeah, I wonder what he has in that blimp because that's going to be important and also he has to multitask at that point. Okay, he just has Yetis in there so that's easy to handle, no invisibility spells needed there. But I wonder if he's going to wall break the Queen now or maybe in a second, but the value that she's going to get there with the Eagle Artillery and the scatter shot looks incredible to me. And so far the Queen Charge is looking good. Uh, I wonder if the heroes on the other side had enough uh, value because the ground expo is still alive. Yeah, as he does wall break this queen into the eagle, this is going to give the queen access to the other scatter shot with two more super wall breakers to utilize for potentially this queen charge to get so much value. As we are seeing super barbarians coming in from the top side, even over <laughs> to help grab that ground expo, even dropping a hog into the area as he's saving out of this royal champion that used to move through the base. But you need to use your super barbs to protect the royal champion so she can stay alive with her digging. Yeah, and I, it seems like now he wants to uh, uh, kind of path the way into the bottom side with the uh, Hog Rider and the Super Barbarians Ooh, at the top side, but it's working break. easy. Let's see if the wall breakers work. Ah. Yes, he gets the wall open. That will give him access to the back and Rage Tower, but not to the Multi Inferno. But for that, he still has a couple of Super Barbarians and a strong, full life Royal Champion coming in from 9 o'clock. Yeah, that Royal Champion's making her way from the left side as he made that Queen invisible. Can be able to take on the enemy Queen. He needs to get there before the uh, his Royal Champion gets locked down. It's a race against the clock. Come on. Queen, yeah, pops a million just so he can take on the enemy queen, and yes, the enemy queen is now distracted on his queen as the world champion is sneaking in to help grab that multi, but the enemy oh. queen gets distracted to the bottom side, so he sends a couple headhunters in as we're just about 50 seconds left in this attack. Oh, this was quite unfortunate. Oh, the scary oh. spell was lured by the queen ability, so she was not able to finish the enemy queen. Instead, she shot away at the skellies, oh. and now it's a race against the time. I think his own queen will be able to finish the enemy wow. queen, but then his own queen is all he has left, and she has to break out of this compartment first to reach the remainder of what's left of this base. Yeah, he wanted that enemy queen to go down, so that's why he popped that queen ability. Oh, that's a good path. Oh. But he does have to make his way to the Sweeper. We do have a Builder Hut on the other side. It is repairing this multi dog Inferno. It's a race against the clock. He's running with the Diggy. The walls are open. This is going to maybe... Oh, come on! How much health does this have? The Diggy is helping stun. He's moving in 10 seconds. But does he have the oh. time to make his way to the Sweeper? No! Uh, he doesn't look happy. And we see the timer oh. running out. And it's uh, a 98% two star. Wow. That was such a great plan. Just a little unlucky there in the end with the timing of yeah. the Queen Abyss. And it's not the three star they needed to show that they are still in this. And Gaku is looking to lead it off as the captain of Navi coming in with a bunch oh. of mass inferno dragons <laughs> here. 13 of them with a dragon rider in the mix using a couple rocket loons to help try to go snipe that air defense. And yes, it does indeed go down as the Flame Flinger is slowly going to be used to the top side. You can use a Barbarian up top by that Flame Flinger to test for Teslas in the area so that it doesn't trigger as the Flame Flinger gets closer and it will get taken out. So you have to be very careful with any open spaces because you could have 
Giant bombs, Teslas, traps that are baiting flame flingers. But these pros know exactly what to do. That's right. And he has set up a nice funnel so far for the um, Inferno Dragon. So let's see about the top side. Okay, he tries to uh, force the uh, flame flinger to the right side so it doesn't, doesn't get into the range of the enemy king. And it seems to be working. And then he wants the Inferno Dragons to hopefully take the king out before it uh, kills the Flame Flinger, I guess, but there come the Inferno Dragons, and now it's all about a perfectly timed warden ability and where the Tornado Trap is hidden. It's all about that Tornado Trap. He's going to move in with these Inferno Dragons and Balloons closer to this Town Hall as he does lure out the Clan Castle. Archers, Super Minions, popping that warden ability. There is no blip because he's using a Flame Flinger, <laughs> so he's going to rely on his troops to make their way to that Town Hall, but this Flame Flinger is taking forever to make its way to that multi-target Inferno. That's right, and there were red mines as well, so these uh, Inferno Dragons are damaged already, but they take out the Town Hall. That was important for Gaku, as he still has some heroes to send into the back end, and he's already started with that, and that makes for a little bit of tanking for the Inferno Dragons that are still do work, doing work in the center of the base. Yeah, with those skeleton spells, provide the distraction on the defenses to move his heroes through, to move the Inferno Dragons through. Remember, you don't really expect necessarily the Inferno Dragons to survive the whole attack. You just want them to get to the core, clear the middle, and then have your heroes finish off the rest of the base. Yeah, he also already smiling. I don't know uh, if he feels secure about this attack already, but there are still some raged up defenses that look very scary to me. But the Inferno Dragons are still tanking for the heroes, so the Queen is almost full life with a Unicorn heating her up. And then what I like most about, uh, about this is that he still has a lot of spells left. What I like less is that the time is running out slowly but surely. There's a lot of base still to make his way all the way up to the top side and the defensive King, but he's past the defenses. Remember, you don't have to remove the defensive heroes, you just have to take out their platforms. So he doesn't actually have to kill that enemy queen, uh, enemy king up there, but there's a lot of buildings left up as he does pop this RC ability, making his way through the enemy raw champion, through this multi-target Inferno, but this king will come back. No, the king does not have the Phoenix, so he won't come back alive, but he's only got 10 seconds, and there just oh. looks like there's too many buildings up here for Gaku. Yeah, it was an overwhelming clan. He's got the force but he doesn't have the time and wow. you know you need the time uh, for the three star and we know that at town hall 15 there are many buildings so these players have to take that into account when they plan their attacks yeah. and it feels like he just gave his flame finger a little bit too much time it was a great attempt but it opens the door for vn esporting but they really need to three star now and i pro is up and you said hammer time well you look at that that's hogs they're coming in with their <laughs> hammers they're Run right on through! They're gonna look to just path their way through. Remember, they're jumping over walls. Who cares about the walls? But there are a lot of open ones here, so you would think maybe Super Barbarians could be used? Well, no. Ipro wants to bring the Queen Charge Twin Hogs. He's got a mix of Super Hogs. He's got the regular Hogs. And that Royal Champion's gonna move in together. Finally now delaying those healers to path this Queen up top as he uses that King ability to help take out the Scatter and eventually push his way into this Ground Expo. Okay, he, may, he uses the invisibility oh. spell, but uh, he doesn't. Oh wow, he doesn't make the builder hunt invisible. So now he reacts quickly with some loons. Now the question is, can they take out the multi inferno in time? He freezes again. There's a red mine, but I don't know. Carbon, it's close. Oh, oh he yes. gets it. That was huge to be able to help take out that multi to protect these healers. If he was not able to do that, the multi-target Inferno would have completely annihilated those healers, stopping this Queen Charge in her tracks. Now that he was able to adapt and save that, taking out the multi, he could continue with his original plan of getting this Queen to charge towards that Town Hall. But, Maxi, this bottom right Rage Spell Tower is slowly coming back and it's going to rage up that monolith as he gets in that range. That's right, and there's also a lot of damage on the Queen, so this rage was timed perfectly, so she would stay alive through, stay alive through those point defenses and the eagle shots, but still, he wanted her to go a different way, so let's hope, I mean, I think that he can come back from this, because the Queen was supposed to take the Town Hall all the time, and she is getting there, so now it's time for the second phase nice. of the attack for the Twin Hogs. And look at that, he used that blimp to help remove the scatter to try to help set that funnel, push these Hogs into the Eagle Artillery, but there are two bomb towers, as the Queen is now securing this town hall is continuing the push towards the bottom, moving into that eagle artillery, but that double bomb towers is going to do so much damage to the hog riders if they're even able to stay alive because it's getting so much damage. But this queen is continuing her charge. Maxi, there might be a bunch of red air bombs as he may lose his healers as he passes this area. 
Yes, and there is a back end multi inferno that he has to get through, but he was able to get some headhunters through the warden ability that killed this back end enemy queen. So the royal champion with her ability and the invisibility spell and the free spell doesn't have to worry about that. The queen also on full life, which is important for the time. As we only have 36 seconds ago, we see, we hear some cheers from the viewers already here in Helsinki, Finland, and it looks good for Ibro. Wow. Can he get the three star? It's only about the time now. But they are celebrating! Look at that! iPro delivering, getting a three star for VN Esporting. And this could be exactly what they need the confidence to be able to deliver and try to take out a defending world champion, which was Navi. And it is going to be stars! And we know that he is one of the best Lalo players in the world, but there we see. 46 Ooh. Super Barbarians, a troop that is considered one of the strongest currently in the game. But he'll start things off with a donut. It seems to be a skelly and bad donut, as he's got the spells for exactly that, and he's now concentrating to do it and get the value that he intended. Stars is looking to help take out the scatter shot, the multi-target inferno. Stars is the in terms of hit rate, the fifth highest hit rate of all these players in this tournament here at 63%. That means 63% of the time he's three-starring the max down all 15 bases. That is insane to think. And he was able to be successful there, taking out the scatter, taking out that multi-target inferno, as he's gonna be coming in with the super barbarians. Already drops an early warden to help move in with the queen, the king, in towards this eagle artillery. And he's even got a log launcher, probably to pair it up from the left side. There it is, to open all the way across to this town hall. Exactly. So the job of the heroes here with the tanking power of the golem and probably an ice golem later on is to take out this town hall. So the log launcher should open the walls, but he also brought a jump spell in case it doesn't go far enough. And now he's funneling the, with the super variants on the outside to make sure that his heroes actually take the path into this town hall, and so far it looks like it's all working according to plan. Now I think that in the back end he will send the royal champion in with the uh, ice golem to take out maybe the three o'clock compartment. But for now we need the troops to somehow get to the town hall. And very unfortunately the king opens the wall to the top side, but luckily the troops come back now as he drops the jump spell. Yeah, that jump spell gives him access now to this town hall, even though he did open the walls, freezing up the town hall. But he has to make his way to that monolith. He wants this royal champion probably to stay on the outside, not towards the town hall and she's gonna go to the Archer Tower next. But he doesn't have any spells to distract that Milith, but he's got the Barbarians, he's got the Headhunters to take out that defensive king as the RC continues to move her way around with nine more Super Barbarians to use to take out the buildings, the defenses, and he's got a, over a minute left. It's looking pretty good here for stars. Yeah, I would say it's looking amazing as we know Ooh. that the Super Barbarians have a lot of hit points, and especially with a lot of them going in front of the heroes they tank just for so long, they can take out uh, skeletons, we see that Stars is happy, we see that the viewers are happy, and this is the three star. Navi needed to stay ahead. Yeah, Stars delivering a three star here against B and E Sporting. And we have none other than Demo coming in, and once again, we see some more super barbarians. We also see five invisibility spells and five bad spells, so that's very interesting. So maybe he's coming in with a little donut, but it's also for oh. the town hall, Garvin He's looking to take out the town hall and the clan castle in the same process. Are you serious? You're looking to do what Cynthia just did? The clan castle is down and the town wow. hall also goes down. Well done, Demo. And like he's even shooting away at this ground though. Can you get it? What? It's so low. Come on, one more bet. Oh. No, but it's low and there's no builder to repair it. So he will have an easy time uh, taking it out later on. And now he's using the rocket balloons to follow uh, to a funnel. And now the follow-up is basically the same like in Stars' attack. Yeah, he wants that. to get in deep into the base with the log launcher. Yeah, with that log launcher going into the eagle, through to the monolith, and then it can line up the shots to hit the multi-target inferno behind it. And you always want to try to pair that one ability with that king of to protect all the barbarians, and he does! Look at the barbarians getting protected. Perfect ward in Eternal Tome to get as much value and continuing this push 
through the core of this base. Great job, and more importantly, everything is staying together. So the funneling troops that he invested were exactly the right amount, but now the king is slowly dying off. Of course, he has the phoenix on him, so he's brought back to life for a second, but he will not be tanking for the queen for long, so he needs to pop the queen ability. Oh, but the scatter shots with their splash damage are almost taking her out. But the Royal Champion is already in the mix as well. Oh, the Queen goes down from the scatter shot. It does get the bounce effect, essentially. The Queen was behind the Electro Titan. But the Royal Champion is coming to the left. She doesn't have much health. Her ability will be forced pretty soon. Remember that Ground Expo. That was on the top of <laughs> It is hitting the troops. It's got, like, no health at the moment. Yeah. Also, oh, the Royal oh, Champion ability doesn't get it. One shot. <laughs> she will get it now. Come on. Yes, one yes. shot. And there we go. Oh, no. <laughs> now it's down. But there's a little bit of back end left. So he should use the troops that he still has to tank for this yep. Royal Champion, I guess. Especially the Archer Tower at the 3 o'clock side. And then he needs to get through these two cannons. And that demo could have it. This is exactly why you want to put the Diggy on your Royal Champion. You can see him celebrating. Yes. He is loving it. The Diggy gets the stun. <laughs> Keeping that Royal Champion alive, absolutely fantastic. So if there is any hero pet you're going to want to be upgrading first, that is 100% <laughs> going to be the Diggy. Such a strong pet and so important in your attacks. Kazuma, and he is known for his extreme queen charges. And when we look at the trooper, we see five healers already. So it's going to be another queen charge from Kazuma, but he also has a red spell in there. He does that recall spell, but I know I don't want to bring this up, but I just have to. <laughs> Kazuma has actually the second most amount of hits hit, one stars out of all these players in the competition. Out of 250 attacks, he's got nine one stars. I know that's not bad, right? But you never know what can happen. As long, oh, he does pull that queen back nice and early. Oh. But he did take out the enemy queen so that the flame flinger can now go into the, grab the scatter shot and that brain warden altar. Yeah, that is very interesting. He just did, he basically invested the recall spell to make sure that his uh, Flame Flinger could get the value in this corner. And that is something that we have seen once or twice before, but not that often. So it seems like it could be something that Navi has been practicing. I mean, especially because we are all about those secret strategies that we want to see from the, from the teams and also the secret base designs. And looking at the base design, this is very interesting with this big open eagle corner and then we have the rest kind of as a diamond-shaped base. Yeah, doing a queen charge, recall, into. Oh, that is just <laughs> crazy. That is something you don't normally see often, but this queen has had to get through these super minions. Does pick off that headhunter, but unfortunately, the royal champion does pull ground skeleton slower and down, so he uses an invis to allow this royal champion to get to continue her push towards that multi-target inferno. Yeah, the Royal Champion's job was also to take out this ground expo that otherwise oh. could have posed a threat to the Flame Flinger. Unfortunately, the Royal Champion found a lot of skelly uh, traps there, so uh, uh, Kazuma is actually investing another free spell there, but he's not going to be able to take out the multi-inferno with no, the Royal no. Champion. He's not. That multi does stay up and that queen can't reach it. So he has to come back all the way around as the King Ability went off into the defensive Royal Champion. And now here comes the Lalo in towards the Town Hall. Remember, he doesn't have a blip because he used the Flame Flinger. So he's going to have to use the Warden Eternal Tome to help take down this Town Hall. And also he invested a couple of free spells on the Royal Champion. And oh. I, don't, I don't know if he has found the Tornado Trap yet. Maybe it's there? No, it's okay. not? Okay, he's got the town hall. That's the most important thing at this point. He does indeed, but the queen unfortunately is beating a wall right now, and she's going to have to make her way to the mile. The warden does go down, and he doesn't have too many balloons left, only four with a freeze and an invis left. He does now pop this queen ability here, but a two-star for Navi would tie this match up here, Maxi. Yeah, but I would say I say it's a time fail if it's a fail. It's probably a time fail, because something would have to go all the way to yep. this multi-inferno, but he still has an invis as well. He could wall break there even, which he's doing nice. now. Um, nice. Yeah, the question is, will anything go back there in time? He needs his queen probably to wrap around and go she for does. the one. She does! She does go back Wow! Around. As we do he's got it. to the left. Hang on, the Yeti takes that out! The queen's working on the multi, and he's going for the storage! And... Oh. Get the star! What? On the buzzer, and we can.
can see the excitement all across this place here in the viewers and in the team, of course, as well. Because we know, we have said how important this is to stay in the lead for Navi. And wow, that was a nail biter for sure. Their last attack, and they need to three star. And it is none other than Hawk. I've said it before, he's got the highest hit rate in the team with a whopping 59%. Ooh. And he's coming in with a queen charge as well. And we'll be finishing it off with, be, be careful, not a Lalo, but a low. There are just <laughs> balloons there. So let's see how he's going to try to pull that off. I mean, Max, who needs a Lava Hound, right? No one needs a Lava Hound. Not in this hit here as Hawk is going in with this queen, charging her way to the right side as the king has been deployed as well to help push this queen in towards, well, to the left, kind of make snake her way into that round expo as he drops a lightning to help take out the multi-target inferno. The queen will easily be able to grab the ground expo. She is taking quite a bit of damage. There is a defensive rage tower there. So as long as the expo still get raged up, he can continue this queen charge without needing another rage. That's right. Now he can charge around this oh. entire compartment, but especially those eagle shots raining away at the queen are a little bit of a problem with the rage up expo in combination. But he's able to drop the spells exactly in the right time and now we see what the super barbarians were for he wanted to funnel the buildings at the three o'clock side to keep this queen inside and notice that he's also brought two more uh, super wall breakers so he wants to open the multi inferno compartment and take that out of the way with his queen uh if you take a look at the percentage it's exactly the same right? <laughs> yeah this is such a close force. This is a difference of a one star. So a three star here for VN would put him up to a 98%. That is insane, which means that it's going to come down to what Klaus does wow. in the final attack, if this does indeed three star, okay. as that warded ability <laughs> protects the blimp, making it all the way to the town hall. But this queen has a path directly for this multi-target inferno as our Billy does now go off. And he makes it to the town hall with the blimp. That was very important. And there are super goblins, apparently, Ooh. in it. And they they were able to take it out. Now he needs to freeze the monolith, which he does in time, so the Royal Champion can take it off, uh, take it out. No more spells, that is important, and a back end scatter shot. He's got the power, I think. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's got an air defenser as well, Royal yep, Champion yep. in the town hall poison, but that's perfect. He's wow. sprinkling in the balloons because Look at the that. scatter shot does splash damage and he can tank for it this way, and they are celebrating. What an attack to Woo. finish it off. VN is already putting up a 13 star performance here in the very first match. And Navi just needs a two star to get the 13. But if they do not get a 100%, they will be down a percent. So I think Klaus will basically have to win on stars at this point. That's absolutely right. Klaus needs to three star. Any two star, even if it's a 99% two star, will mean Whoa. Navi has to go to the lower bracket. And what? we said it before, they are defending world champions. Wow. So the pressure is on for sure. The man, the myth, the legend Klaus is coming in with Inferno baby <laughs> dragons. Usually we see some very sophisticated plans from Klaus most of the time, but it seems like uh, they have been practicing the Inferno baby dragons a lot. So now let's see where he come in, comes in. With 14 of them, he's even got a clone spell. Typically you see a clone used with super minions or super archers here. As the blimp lands, it makes it, pulls a red air buff, there's a the clone, there's a range, in fizz to keep them going, pulls another red air buff, but he's okay. Looking to grab a multi, grabbing a mile, grabbing a town hall, and even a wizard tower at the end, taking out a defensive king, which would really help a royal champion. Yeah, that was great because that was expected from the base builder, as we could see with the Seeking Air Mines at the start and the Red Mines coming in. But Klaus chose an angle that allowed him to still get it through. He got the value, and that's the most important thing about these attacks. Now, the push with the Inferno Baby Dragons will be followed by the heroes coming in from the 6 o'clock side. That's why Klaus is already funneling with the Yeti. Maybe he wanted to take out the air defense, which he doesn't. But so many Inferno Dragons still alive that they will be able to overwhelm it. But the heroes have oh. to finish. 
finish the base. They have to do. There's two minutes left in this attack. He took out the town hall. There's no clan castle. The Inferno Dragons are flying around towards the Eagle as the King is going to make its way towards the right side, protecting this queen with a wall break. Coming in to open up this compartment to help his heroes continue his way around with a poison spell being invested on the defensive queen to slow her down. And possible skelly traps as well. And this wall break was so important oh. so the queen wouldn't get stuck in this six o'clock compartment. And so far, this is looking amazing. Still has the Royal Champion to deploy as well. And a free spell, but now the rage spell goes off. That's the last chance for the defender. The raged up defenses around there. If they he's kill smiling. off enough troops, he is smiling. That's right. <laughs> oh, he's got the Royal Champion moving through. He's got a freeze left to use as he continues his way around. The queen does lock onto a wall, so that's going to slow her down. You do want to see that queen get outside the base, but unfortunately, she now retargets to the best wall to go to the top side of this base. As the RC ability does go off, there's only some tests. A couple point defenses on top side as he continues to push his way through with a minute left in this attack. Yeah, it's looking good, but there are usually scary tracks around the Tesla oh. farms, and we see three of them popping already. But I think he's overwhelming this with the full life queen, and she doesn't even have to break a wall because all the walls are open, and with 50 seconds, time will not be the problem here. So either the heroes finish this base, or yeah, the time wow. runs out. But we see it already, and now the smile is getting that. bigger and bigger as Whoa. he knows. He's done it! Navi win their first match! And VN go to the lower bracket. Klaus delivers! Getting the three star when they needed it most! With putting Navi to 14 stars! And Navi will be advancing in the upper bracket! But VN Esporting will have another chance in the lower bracket. But what a first match in the 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship. <laughs> Incredible stuff we have here, Max. That's exactly why we've waited for this the entire year. Those match matches, and especially with Navi yeah. being the favorite here, and we, we saw the prediction beforehand, but they just yeah, the, the VN just performed and was so, so close until the very last attack. So I would say now, let's hear it from the winners. Let's see what they have to say after this victory. Well, first of all, congratulations, Navi. You guys have won the very first match of the 2023 World Championships. How does it feel to take that first victory? So every single year, the first war is the most important for us, so we are super, super happy that we actually managed to win this one. And Kazuma almost timed out on the last attack. Were you getting a little nervous there, or a little, little scared that you might not make it? あの、カズマさんはギリギリあの、ま、前回できましたけれども、あの、時間が足りるかどうかちょっと緊張したんでしょうか? いや、だるいよ。オッケー。いや、本当にあの、1点で流れが決まったと思ってて、本当に運がこちらに向いていたなと感じました。So <笑> we were kind of nervous like it was like so super close we didn't know if it's going to go or not, but we thought okay, he's going to make it and uh, all went fine. And is there anything you'd like to say to your fans, that everybody who's watching live, or to the audience here? ファンの皆さん、あの、こっちに座ってる、あの、見てる方と、あの、配信を見てる方のために一言挨拶お願いします。といつも皆様の応援のおかげで、ここまで来れたと思ってるので、本当にいつも応援ありがとうございました。uh, we think we are here where we are, thanks to our fans cheering us on, so thank you, thank you all for the uh, ongoing support. Congratulations to Navi!